Guys, everybody was already doing a pretty good job of this, but throughout the week, hey, if you're the one applying the submission, I want you to like, obviously I want you to stand there and like throw the shit out of the person. But like, I, I want you to try to keep them there. Okay? Again, whenever we practice submission defense, it's very important. Because okay? you're going to get used to practicing with somebody who's being loose and letting you go through the motions, and then you're going to go do a lot, and you're going to lose a lot of confidence. Or it just won't work, right? Um, Throughout the class, we'll look at some differences between if you're getting arm end hip hand or high elbow. But a lot of the positions, we're gonna focus on arm end, okay? Just for the simple fact, and this is what we just looked at in uh, the wrestling class and the basic class, is when there's an arm end hip hand, it's more conducive for like further grappling positions, right? Or takeouts or other submissions like monoplatas and kimuras and stuff like that, okay? So when I have this shoulder, I do have a stronger connection to his torso, okay? While a high elbow can tend to be a tighter choke, my connection to the rest of his body isn't as tight. Okay, so for now, let's just stick with arm and hip okay? Uh, so, starting here, okay, kind of reverse engineering a lot of the stuff we just looked at, all right? Whenever he gets me here, I need to prevent, like, quite a few things, actually, okay? He could reasonably, Choke me here by just walking in and bridging his hips, okay? That's more at like a beginner or like self-defense level, okay? Other people, if I allow him to walk in, he could jump guard on me, go ahead. Okay? And more so as we start getting to the ground, if he starts making angles here and he sits through towards my head, that's also pretty bad, okay? So I need to have, like, tracking over his hips here. And I can't allow him to freely use his hips, all right? So that's really gonna be our first lesson here, and you're gonna see this throughout the class, okay? I'm gonna take both hands here, and I'm gonna post on the hips, okay? So if he tries to jump guard here, like, he'll tell you it's not gonna happen. If he tries to walk in to try to finish, difficult. If he tries to walk to the side, you see it's very easy for me to track him, okay? Now, one of the very first things we should try to do here, it's going to be like almost similar to a heel hook. We should try to slip our head the same way we would slip a heel, okay? So I'm going to post on the hips, and as I'm doing this very small but important detail here, I'm going to shrug my shoulders and look at the floor, okay? Very similar to what we do for arm triangles. So as I extend my arms and walk away, I want my shoulder forward and my head down, and now from here, I'm gonna to start to walk towards the choke. As I walk towards the choke, my goal is to get my head back to his chest, okay? He wants my head here, I want my head in the middle. So as I go here, I'm gonna keep walking, walking, walking. I'm gonna over-exaggerate that walk. What I don't wanna do here is start to walk out and stop early, and then he just jumps on the guillotine again, or jumps on an underhook or an overhook and goes for a takedown. So one more time, he catches the front headlock. Okay, right away we're framing on the hips. I start walking. My goal is to get my head to the middle of his chest, almost like eyesight perpendicular at this point. A lot of you, like, privately about, you know, adjustments you can make in your game. A lot of times I do tell you to hand fight for guillotines, but there's a time and place for that, okay? On the feet, okay, we're still vertical, we're still grappling. I'm gonna need my hands for a lot of different things, okay? So a lot of times, like, it's not wrong to hand fight from here, okay? But if you get too stuck on the hand, that's when you're getting snapped down, you're getting tripped to like a mountain view and stuff like that, okay? Hands on the hips, okay? You're gonna have a lot more freedom with the hand fight, okay? Um, so we're gonna hit, uh, for lack of a better term, an arm spin here, or in judo, what they call a okay? So from here, we're always going to start with the same framework, pushing on the hips, making sure he's not converting to a stronger position, okay? From here, I'm going to make sure I'm taking my middle fingers on the same side. I'm grabbing above the elbow where the funny bone is, okay? So if he lets go, see, I still have some traction over this arm, okay? But we're really going to go for this when we really feel him bite down, and in a lot of cases, when that first one's not working, okay? So here, this time, we're going this way. So I'm gonna step through, okay? This arm's gonna come to this side. When I go to throw him, he's gonna have two choices. Hold on, and 
do the face plant, then potentially injure his shoulder, or he's going to have to roll through. Okay? I want you guys to guess which one I'm wanting to do. Okay. Right. So here, we are never sitting on our butt or laying backwards when we do this. We're going straight to our hip. So I step through, and now I'm going right to my outside hip. Okay? And then we'll come to the top. You can choose not to front roll. However, if you don't, you will land on your shoulder and your face, and it will be very unpleasant, okay? So I'm gonna recommend whenever you guys drill this takedown, you're always finishing with the front roll, okay? All right, so one more time. We're here, okay? The cool thing about this, guys, is the, the tighter he'll hold on, the better connection you're gonna have to a throw. Okay, obviously, if you were to let go completely, I can't do this throw, right? That's very important that you're using this grip in case he does let go, okay? If he does let go, it's gonna take him some time to fully unwind here, okay? And realistically, if you're doing this throw in real time, you're not doing it this slow. You're gonna do it pretty fast, all right? So we're starting here, going here, pulling in, stepping through, going all the way there. Now, reasonably from here, the next step would, would be, you get snapped down the front headlock and turn him. Yes. Okay, so guys, leading up to this point, okay, on top of doing things like hand fighting, you can stay locked, okay? Again, if I'm making space here, okay, it's not wrong to keep trying the same stage. Even though you're on your knees, if you can still like kind of wrestle up here, even the throw, if I can find a way to get through here, Great, you can still do those prior escapes, okay? However, I want you guys to be under the assumption now and this is gonna happen every so often, even those of you that are really good here. You're gonna get broken down to turtle and you're not gonna be able to wrestle up. Okay, you're gonna be knees and elbows, right? Ben's gonna start with an arm and guillotine. Okay. All right, so to finish a good guillotine here, uh, we talked about this in the basics class. He's going to be wanting to circle around me towards the choke, sweep his leg through, and then sit there, okay? So really the first thing I can try to counter here is that uh, angle he's trying to make to get to a good finishing position, all right? <coughs> so when he starts to come up, I'm going to look to get control of this leg, okay? Now there's numerous different ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you guys probably the safest way so you don't get caught in further trouble here, okay? I'm always gonna use this overhook to make his knee bow in as I step around. If I can get his knee on the inside of my leg, I have a good chance of hitting the escapes on this side, okay? So this is gonna take us right to side control. Once that knee goes in, we're gonna convert into his back, okay? Now really important here, I need to use this arm to block this hip. If I don't, grab to walk out, go belly down, and just get right back up the front headlock. Okay. So we have to block that part. Right? Go ahead, step up again. Right here. So now, if he does the same thing, my elbow's blocking. Okay. Got my near hand under the back. Guys, we're always going to walk up as if we're going to side control, nice and perpendicular, T-shaped, okay? And then as we're blocking here, I can use the hand that's in the front to start putting pressure on the wrist and slipping my head out, okay? He starts to step up. In order to go this direction, you need to beat this leg. If you can't, you're already looking at the other direction. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? Covering the hips. Walking high, and then looking to free our head. In that uh, direction throughout the week, I just said that's the most simplistic way of getting there, okay? Um, potentially other ways you can get there, and I see a lot of you do this, it's good. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's high elbow or arm in for right now, okay? But let's say uh, Grant steps up, okay, he sits through but he sits back. Okay, if he ever sits back, yeah, you guys can do like cartwheel style passes, okay? But you have to be careful with that, okay? That's if he sits back, which is kind of improper, right? If he sits to a hip and you try to do that, you can get stuck, right? 
Another example, and this one's pretty common too, is and you guys look at all these like guard passes, right? So that would be like a cartwheel pass, me stepping around, it's kind of like a Toriando pass. Like, you can also use like a slicing knee method for when he starts coming up here, okay? So if he ever steps up and again starts to sit back, okay, you can always slice your knee through as well here, okay? He locks up the guillotine. Okay, he sits through and he has butterfly hooks in. Okay. Something like a back step or a long step pass. Okay. So uh, my point is, is a lot of the habits you guys have from passing guard, it can be applied to using, uh, can, it can be applied to uh, defending the guillotine. Okay. When you're using the method of going to side control. Uh, let's look at the danger first. So if I go high elbow here, okay, and Grant decides to pass the same way, he's walking into a trap there. Okay, it's a very tight finish. So one thing you need to change when they have a high elbow is we need to release pressure from the high elbow, okay? So as he's stepping up and coming around, okay, on top of beating this knee, this arm, you need to cock it back, and it needs to go over the shoulder here, okay? So now when I go to side control, if he tries to finish a choke here, it's very, very difficult, okay? Now, what's cool about this is I can also use this as an opportunity to choke him, okay? The more he holds on here, the better opportunity I have for a Von flu choke, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that nice perpendicular angle for side control, we're gonna punch the cross face arm deep, okay? It should be a cross face arm now if you're throwing that over the shoulder, okay? Palm up. This hand's gonna come up, palm down. I'm gonna lock tight here. As I lock tight, this is very important. You guys gotta pull everything into you like this, okay? Now from here to put pressure, first thing I wanna turn my right shoulder in so if Grant lets go, it's very hard to free his arm, okay? Now to choke him, my other shoulder, I want to get up on my toes and I want to start rolling into that shoulder to make pressure for the choke, okay? Remember for a high elbow, it's very important that as you're beating this knee, you need to get this arm over the shoulder. It's very, very important. Or if you pass here, again, he's gonna choke you, okay? All right, we're the side control here. I punch this arm deep. I bring this arm up. Guys, do not skip this step. Pull them in. Okay, this is gonna make this really tight now, okay? I'm shrugging my left shoulder, so if Andrew tries to let go, it's very difficult. I walk towards his head. Now I just start sinking my weight here. This isn't necessarily the favorable direction because it's gonna lead to a scramble. But again, going against somebody who's good at guillotines or good at positioning, they catch you off guard. A lot of times, this is gonna be your best chance of escape or at the very least a scramble, okay? Uh, guys, for this particular one, I want all of you to use an arm and guillotine, okay? Reason being, the problems you're gonna run into are gonna be tenfold with an arm and guillotine versus an arm and guillotine, okay? Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second. So he's gonna do the same thing, front headlock. I'm always gonna resort to this direction if I can't meet the basic requirement of beating this knee, okay? So let's say, for example, Ulysses sits through. Maybe he throws a leg over the back even. It's gonna be really hard to step over this leg, okay? Or sometimes when you guys go to beat the legs, you guys have to go the wrong way, okay? So what we're gonna be looking at here is just like the throw we did, falling to our hips and not stopping on our back, okay? We're gonna run into problems here if we stop on our back. We'll talk about that in a second. So I'm gonna roll left hip, and I'm gonna roll through the right hip, okay? So as I'm doing this, I'm never stopping, okay? He's gonna do it to me now, I'm gonna hold on, okay? When we both scramble back to our knees, this is the worst case scenario, you know, the person just keeps following you. Ulysses' job is gonna be the same, to get his head back to the safe position here, okay? All right, he rolls, okay, I roll this one. Okay, see? 
So if Grant steps around and he starts sitting through, he's doing good things here, throwing the leg over the back, it is gonna be next to impossible to get to this side, okay? So we're gonna go this way. When I go this way, I'm gonna look to roll from hip to hip. Okay? Most of the time, if they're gonna hit things, they're gonna follow you. And again, we're gonna look to do what we did at the beginning of class, which is turning perpendicular and slipping our head out. Okay? I'm seeing people, when they, like when they go to roll, like, let's say I wanna go this way to this hip, like stepping up, like almost like you're gonna do a Grammy roll, right? And we've been doing a lot of that lately. Um, you, you literally don't have to do nearly as much, okay? Like, I'm literally just gonna fall to my head. All right, so there's gonna be some scenarios here where Grant falls to that hip, and either he gets stuck or he's too slow, and somebody who's really good at this inverted north-south position understands like the basic principle of control here, which is steering wheel pressure with the elbows, okay? So if he tries to go to get up to his other hip to finish the escape, all I have to do is pull my elbow down here if he stops his momentum, okay? Either way he turns, I can use my elbows to keep him here. So this is a tough situation. Regardless of all those specific situations, you will just generally get stuck here sometimes, okay? Now the reason why this is so much more dangerous with an arm in guillotine is uh, the easier conversions to different types of chokes and positions, okay? So from here, it's gonna be much easier for me to switch my feet, get up to my head, start walking to a mounted guillotine. Whereas if I had a high elbow, that would be much more difficult and easier for him to escape here, okay? Also too, and eventually this will be its, its own class, okay? We're gonna have to worry about people switching to anaconda chokes, leaving this through for a darts. Okay? There's lots of other bad things that can happen when you're being put in an arm and guillotine versus a high elbow, that makes sense. Okay. So, I start to roll, he's following me. Uh, we're gonna kind of shy away from anacondas and darts right now. Let's talk about when they start pulling them out. Now, I know not all of you have practiced this, okay? This is, if you're in Ulysses' position, this is how I want you to get up so no one's struggling here. I want you to split your legs. Okay, he's gonna start to walk into his toes, turn his head down, and he's gonna use that to go to a mounted guillotine. Okay, let's go back. So, as I start to see those hips coming towards me, I need to go back to the beginning of class and have my frames ready. So as he enters into the mount, it's almost like more south, okay? I'm keeping a buffer of space here. Now from here, I'm just gonna start to insert butterfly hooks, okay? Now, this isn't gonna get you out right away, but watch, when he goes to put pressure on me here, look, go ahead. See, I'm still talking. There's not a lot of choking pressure here, okay? These butterfly hooks are taking a lot of bite off of the choke here. Whereas if I took these out, go ahead, do it now. See, that's the way it works here. All right, now, it's just a matter of separating the hands and making him lose confidence in this position. So very simple, at the end here, that's all I want you guys to do. Keep your butterfly hooks in and just start extending your shins. That's gonna extend him. That's gonna start to loosen his leverage here, okay? All right, now if they continue to hold on, just like the bond flew in the throw, this can lead to some good situations here or he starts to climb up towards the back, or if he steps forward, entering into the legs, okay? A lot of people there, like once you do that though, they're gonna back up, okay? They're gonna identify that they lost the choke, okay? Lock with an arm in guillotine. We roll, he starts to come up. I need to have my forearms ready. The frame on the hips, okay. So if you're framing, you're having trouble getting your knees in, like you can't just throw them in, guys, use hip escapes. So make sure you're firm with your forearms here. You can't throw your knees in. Just go one foot on the mat at a time. Hit the seat, knee in, and then knee in. That'll help you if you're not as flexible here. Okay, and then just start to stretch. Okay. I'm parallel with him. Anytime you're parallel, you're playing chin on chin, you're playing wrestle up, stay, whatever. It is possible for him to snap your head here. 
put you in a guillotine. He could even step in, sink his hips, and finish me here. Okay. He could also do the same thing. Roll over his shoulder. And look, we're back in the same position again. Okay. So in spots like that, I usually tell you guys this, especially when you're playing open guards where you're closer to the person. That's why I'm always telling you to get perpendicular, like off to the side. Chin on chin and such, like here. So the chances of him getting a good snap and guillotine on my head are much, much smaller. Okay? So those are the things you gotta think about while you're playing guard too. Alright? Let's say he's on his knees. Okay, for whatever reason here he catches a guillotine. Alright, this goes back into what I just showed you guys. If I can establish a butterfly guard here, like yeah, this is bad. But if I can get control of my lower body, the chances of him applying a good choke are very, very small now. Even better, like kind of the end of the line here, if I were to get something like a close guard, extremely difficult to choke me here. Make sense? All right. So just think about those things when you guys are defending guillotines as well. All right. Any questions?